of the ranchos. April 4th, 1845. Inglewood traded for two barrels of brandy. November 16th, 1860. Scotch nobleman buys Rancho Centinella. May 23rd, 1941. Celebrities throng opener at Hollywood Park. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents the romance of the ranchos, dramatizing the thrilling adventure which signalized the growth of Southern California from the days of the dons to the present. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, uncovers another tale of the early days of the Southland, recreated from the pages of history. business of the Title Insurance and Trust Company to know the facts about land ownership in Southern California. And believe me, that means a lot of facts to know when you consider that the early day ranchos, comprising what is now Los Angeles County, have been split up into more than a million and a half separate parcels of assessed real estate. That means thousands and thousands of changes of ownership of these parcels through the years. Keeping track of all these and of the milestones in the lives of the myriads of owners deaths, wills, divorces, deeds, mortgages, foreclosures, judgments, and so on, is the big job of the Title Insurance and Trust Company. It's a job that never ends and one that gets harder rather than easier as time goes on. Our story tonight, however, presents the romantic and adventurous background of all this activity, and it's one of the most interesting of the series. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to tell the story. Buenas noches, senores y senores. Our story tonight deals with the land we know as the modern cities of Inglewood, Hawthorne, El Segundo, and Redondo, Hermosa, and Manhattan beaches, steeped in the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> Back through time, our story takes us from the Hollywood Park of today to another kind of horse race, which took place in the year 1822. Hey, horseman, <coughs> Stop! Hold! Hey, he dismounted, hidden that pile of rocks. We haven't surrounded. Dismount, we're closing on him. Julio, you stay with the horses. All right, men, spread out. Ah, how are y'all, men? Be careful. These men are desperate. Slowly now. There he is, Hold running down fire. the ravine. Hold your fire. Get him, fire! <laughs> He's down. Hurry, after him. There he is. Ah, see. See, well, there he is. It's a fair trade. He ruined my sombrero, but he will not need a sombrero <laughs> anymore, huh? No, he will not steal any more horses either. Let that be a lesson to all horse thieves. <laughs> Did you catch the horse thief? <laughs> si. That's him riding with Julio. <laughs> riding with Julio? <laughs> oh, I see. He's dead. <laughs> Better he is than we, huh? <laughs> si, good work. I've been waiting for you. I have news. News, huh? Well, wait a minute. I must rest a moment before I get excited again. Juan, see to this fellow, will you? Si, si, Don Antonio. I fix him up. One wooden box. Ah, as, and see that the news is spread, huh? So that all horse thieves will know that I, Don Antonio Nacio Avila will personally see to it they do not escape from the law. See, I will. Oh, you're a good catcher of horses, Don Antonio. Ah, it is my duty as consul of the Pueblo. Oh, do you do your duty so well that Capitan Noriega, military commander of Santa Barbara, has decided to reward you. 
Reward for me? See, that is the news I have for you. He has sent you permission to use the place called Sassual Redondo to build the corral and keep your stock. You mean the land by the round clump of willows? See, it is yours. Ah, use. this is wonderful news, wonderful. Oh, madre de Dios, I'm so happy. <laughs> I will make it my rancho, Rancho Sassual Redondo, the property of Don Antonio Nacio Avila. Countryman of the Pueblo and horse thief catcher extraordinary. <laughs> And so in 1822, the year after Mexico obtained its independence from Spain, Don Antonio Ignacio Avila became the holder of a great rancho. He'd only been given permission to live there and keep his cattle. And actual ownership to the land was not given him for 15 years. Then, too, the boundaries of his domain were not clearly fixed. The way was open for other settlers to contest his claim to the great 25,000-acre parcel of land. Thus, when another prominent and respected citizen of the early Southland moved in on what Don Antonio considered his track, he made no protest at first. Then, one day came the news. Don oh, Antonio! Don Antonio! Si, what is it, Diego? What's the matter? I've just come from the Pueblo. Don Ignacio Machado is at the prefect's office. He's filing a claim to the land of Sentinella Creek where he's been leaving. What? You mean he really intends to claim ownership? See, si, that is what he's doing right oh, now. I must get there at once. I must protest. This is my land. Here, your horse. I must hurry. See, si, see, si, I must hurry. But, Senor Prefect, I protest this is my land. Well, Don Antonio, that is what is not quite clear. The boundaries of your land have never been very clear. I hardly know what to say. Everyone knows that the land of the round clump of willows called South Sal Redondo is mine. That's just it, Don Antonio. I claim the land called the Springs of the Sentinel, not your South Sal Redondo. No, Don Inocio. That you should do such a thing to me. It is the same thing. It is part of my land. I disagree, Senor. If it is your land, why have you not used it, cultivated it? Because I was being gracious and letting you use it. But I didn't think you'd do this to me. You were being gracious. Senor... Why have you not said something before? Why have you not protested before? For three years I have lived here, built houses, a corral, planted a vineyard. See, si, Don Antonio, he even built a reservoir and ditches for irrigation. Ah, no matter. It was not his land. That is a matter for the ayuntamiente to decide, not you, senor. And I say no, senor. Senores, senores, please. This is an office of the law. You will have to call somewhere else. Pardon, senor. I do not mean to lose my temper, senor Perfect. Only this... This fellow is so irritating. It is not that I am irritating. It's that you are so stubborn, Don Antonio. If there is any justice, I shall have my land. If there is any justice, Senores, senores, please. But Don Antonio didn't secure what he called justice. The Ayuntamiento, or City Council of Los Angeles, decided that Machado had valid claim to the land called El Guaje de la Sentinela or springs of the sentinel. And so the neighbors were forced to bury their quarrel. A few years later, in 1837, Governor Alvarado granted Don Antonio title to his land. And Machado received his grant in 1844 from the later governor, Michel Torreña. Then, a year later, Don Ignacio Machado finally tired of the country and decided to move into Los Angeles. At last, Don Antonio Avila saw a chance to regain possession of all the land for his family. And so he called in his brother, Bruno. Uh, you see, I've just had word that Don Inocio has decided to move into the Pueblo. He wishes to leave his rancho, Waje de la Sentinel. See, si, but where do I come in? Uh-huh. Why, well, Don Inocio is looking for a house in the Pueblo. See, si, uh, but... Well, uh... my brother, you have a house in the Pueblo? See, si, I mm. have, but I do not understand. Well, if you could persuade Don Inocio to trade... You mean hmm? I give up my house for his little rancho? Oh, but Bruno, it is a fine rancho, very valuable. His vineyards grow fine as grapes for vino. No, I... Uh, vino? See? Si. It is rich land, huh? You will enjoy the country life. Uh, that I will <laughs> not. I am happy in the Pueblo. My house there, it is worth much more than this rancho. No, I think I stay. But, Bruno, for me, for our family, think of it. This great rancho, once again, ours, all ours. It will keep our children, our children's children rich and respected. Great rancheros. You must think of them. But, uh, well, I don't know. I, I'll think about it. The 
will sew you come before me to transfer your property. See, si, that is right, Senor Sanchez. Don Bruno Avila here has a house in the Pueblo. I have the Rancho Aguaje de la Centinela. We wish to trade. See, si, I will draw up the necessary paper. Let me see now. Ignacio Machado and Bruno Avila, April 4, 1845. Ignacio Machado, give to Bruno Avila. Uh, Don Ignacio. Right. See, si, Don Bruno. I have been thinking. I do not think I want to live in the country. Mm-hmm. This is a fine time to be thinking of that. The, the, the business is all settled. In a moment, Senor Sanchez will have the papers already. But I think my house in the Pueblo is worth more than your rancho, and I do not like this. But, mi amigo, you came to me and offered... I know, I know, but I have thought it over. It is not enough. Mm-hmm. Not enough? What more can I give? I do not own any more land. I have no gold. Perhaps uh, you have uh, aguardiente, brandy? Si, plenty. Made from my own vineyards. It just like you will be able to make. Mm. Well, suppose you had a couple of barrels of brandy. Then perhaps your rancho would be worth as much as my house. Almost two barrels? There's a lot of worth much less. See, that is what I mean. Hmm. Very well, I shall do it, Senor Sanchez. Add to what I shall give Don Bruno two barrels of aguardiente. But the best aguardiente? See. Si. Of course, senores. Just a moment. Senor, you see, you still get the best of the bargain. Not at all, senor. I am foolish to make such a bad trade. Senor, you evidently do not know the value of a house in the pueblo. And you evidently do not realize the value of a great rancho in the country. Here you are, senores. It is all ready. Good. Then it is settled. Uh, not exactly. You must uh, sign the paper first. Sign the paper? See, si. Put your name to it. But, senor, I do not know how to write you cannot even sign your name? No. <laughs> he cannot even sign his name. <laughs> then I will sign for you, Don Bruno. Gracias, senor. Here we are. There. Now, uh, Don Ignacio. Eh? Uh, will you sign now? You mean I am a sign it too? Oh, but of course. Oh. But that is... It will be impossible. Sore hands, you know. But a minute ago, your hand wasn't sore. You shook hands with me. But uh, very sudden, you know, g- g- rheumatism. Uh, would you like for me to sign for you too, Don Ignacio? Gracias, senor. Oh, <laughs> you laugh because I cannot write, eh? And all the time, you cannot sign your name either, eh? <laughs> so caught you this time, Don Ignacio. <laughs> Once again, the two great ranchers were merged into ownership of the same family. In 1851, the new rulers of California, the United States government, appointed a land commission to pass upon the validity of Spanish and Mexican land grants. And finally, patents were issued to the Avila brothers. But a few years later, disaster was to strike for Bruno. He needed money worse than land. And so we went first to John G. Downey and James P. McFarland, Los Angeles' first bankers, and later to Hilliard P. Dorsey, from whom he borrowed money. Uh, Mr. Dorsey, I want $1,400. Eh, that's a lot of money, Vila. I'll have to have some security. See, si, I've thought of that. I'll give you a mortgage on the Rancho Aguaje de la Centinela. Don Bruno. See, si, Senor Sherry. I have bad news for you. This is a summons for your appearance in court. Your land is to be foreclosed. Don Bruno was able successfully to contest the foreclosure suit by Downey and McFarland. But when the debtor came into court to contest Dorsey's suit... And, uh, so it seems to me, Don Bruno, from reading of the agreement between you and Mr. Dorsey, he has a valid claim against you. But, senor, before you said... In the case of Downey and McFarland, your wife did not sign the mortgage on your homestead. According to the law, she must. But this time, she did sign. But, senor judge, I speak only Spanish. It was written in English... I did not know what I was signing. I suppose that the rancho had been reserved for us. I'm sorry, senora. Afraid the law can't recognize that claim. My decision is that Captain Hilliard B. Dorsey is entitled to a judgment of $3,359 and a decree of foreclosure. (laughs) 
Details of the records of Captain Hilliard's judgment and decree of foreclosure against Don Bruno's land are posted in the files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company, along with those of thousands of other transactions behind which lie real-life stories of drama, tragedy, triumph, happiness, and woe. One of the many sources of land title information which the Title Insurance Company must check daily is the county's record of superior court filings. During 1940 alone, these included 56,565 separate actions affecting land titles, and the figure for the last 10 years is 515,294. Among these were 125,875 divorces, 97,257 probates, 50,512 involving juveniles, and 32,555 classified as psychopathics, which include cases of incompetency and commitments to insane asylums. Each and every one of these filings can affect the validity of land titles. So each and every one was noted and posted in the title insurance company records the same day it was filed in Superior Court. Once again, the Rancho of Waje de la Centinella was split from Sao Sal Redondo in ownership. For in 1856, Hilliard P. Dorsey stood in front of the county courthouse. Yes, 1900. Who'll make it 2,000? 2,000? I have 2,000. Do I hear more? It's going for 2,000. Once, twice, sold to Captain Hilliard P. Dorsey for the sum of $2,000. But Captain Dorsey, a veteran of the Mexican War and a real Westerner, was not to enjoy ownership of his rancho very long. For he had married Civility Rubottom, daughter of Uncle Billy Rubottom, who was one of the Southland's best-loved characters. And the captain and his wife, and his wife's relatives, had their disagreements. One day, Dorsey returned home. Civility! Civility, I brought company! Ah. That's funny. Perhaps your wife has gone outside. Oh, I didn't see her. Perhaps she's in here. That's civility. <laughs> Perhaps she has left you, senor. What'd you say? Oh, perdone me. I did not mean anything by it. That's no, only... all right, Ramon. Uh, what's this? A note. Oh, probably telling you she has gone to the neighbors. Oh, no, Ramon. You were right the first time. She's run away from me. She's gone to her father's house in El Monte and taken our baby with her. Oh, senor, I am sorry, but, but surely her father... Uh, that does not mean uh, anything. You don't know her father, senor. He doesn't care very much for me. Oh, that is too bad. Yeah, too bad for him. This is the last time I'll stand for his meddling. I'm going out there to his place in El Monte and bring her back. I'd like to see him try to stop me. Senor, you must be careful. Yeah, now. let him be careful, senor. <laughs> Possibility, don't you get excited. Oh. Nothing's going to happen. Hilliard knew he had these quarrels before. Yeah. It's high time he taught him a lesson. But he's not likely to sit back and do nothing. He's the kind of man who doesn't like to be crossed. <laughs> well, stop fretting. Oh. If he comes here, he'll just be wasting his time. And that is, uh, unless he comes to apologize. Apologize? But... Not Hilliard. That's what I'm afraid of. He might... Now, civility, just forget such things. <laughs> Ain't nothing going to happen. What was that? Oh, probably nothing at all. Just to win. Sounded like somebody coming in the gate. <laughs> Your imagination's working overtime, Civility. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll go see. Father, don't. I'm afraid. Now, child, just be calm. Ain't nothing to worry about. Take my old shotgun with me. I'll be all right. Father. Hello there. Anybody out there? Hello. That you, Dorsey? Yeah, that's me. I'm coming in, Rubottom. Get out of my way. Now, just a minute, son. Just calm down a bit. I said get out of my way. I've come to get my wife and you ain't going to stop me. Now, look you here, Dorsey. You better get control of yourself. You're asking for it. Father, look out. He's got a gun. Dorsey, don't. Please, don't. <laughs> Father. Father, are you hurt? I'm all right, civility. But... Hilliard. I... Oh. I'm not sorry, civility. It's either him or me. And I guess... I had the best aim. (laughs) 
Elliot P. Dorsey was dead. And his widow, civility, had no taste for running the complicated affairs of the Rancho Aguaje de la Centinela. Among her many other troubles was the cause of a certain Frenchman, the son-in-law of the former owner, Bruno Avila. He'd built his home on the land. But this is no longer Don Bruno's land. I own it now, and you have no right here. Mais, mademoiselle, this is my home. I built it with my own hands. My wife, she and I live here, and you want that we should go? I do. This is my land. I need it for my own cattle. But where am I supposed to go? Huh? I don't care where you go. We've let you stay here this long, and I can't let it go on any longer. Senor, I shall run him off. No, no I want no violence. I'm sure the gentleman will see my position and leave of his own accord. That I will not do. This is my home, and here I stay. <laughs> Widow Dorsey could not cope with the situation. And shortly afterward, she sold the rancho with great relief. The next owner was Francis J. Carpenter, who turned the property over to Joseph Lancaster Brent, the attorney and land title expert, almost immediately. Brent quickly settled the matter of the Frenchman by paying him $300 for any further claim to the land. Then a stranger came to town, and shortly afterward, he stopped in to see her. Uh, Mr. Brent, I hear you'll be interested to sell your share of this land called Rancho Centinella. Yes, I've been thinking of it, sir. You see, I'm a southerner, and there's some talk of war between my countrymen and them Yankees. If that's the case, I want to be free to go back and offer my services. But tell me, you're a Scotch nobleman, aren't you? Why would you want to be buying land here? Well, I don't want to seem disloyal, but the climate here satisfies my wife and me. It's quite a bit different than our cold, dreary highlands. Well, sir, I warrant it is. So you decided you'd like to live here? Well, I think so. That is, if I can get the land I want. And that is, uh, Sentinella? To start with, yes. Well, perhaps I can accommodate you, sir. That is, if... Well, uh... don't worry about that, Mr. Brent. The price is no object. Well, then, I'm sure we can make a deal. Joseph Lancaster Brent went off to become a great Confederate general. And Sir Robert Burnett of Craves Castle, Scotland, took up his abode in Bruno Avila Adobe, which stands today. Shortly afterward, he bought the ranch of Sao Sal Redondo from the heirs of Antonio Ignacio Avila. And once more, these two tracts were combined into one great rancho. For 12 years, Sir Robert directed operations of sheep and cattle raising on his vast acreage. But finally, in 1873... It became necessary for him to return to Scotland. And with regret, he turned his domain over to another. Uh, how did you happen to come here, sir, all the way from Canada? Well, we were going to Jamaica for my wife's health. But I read a book called California for Health, Pleasure, and Residence. So I came here instead. <laughs> so we have people advertising our land, huh? And now you've decided to stay? Yes. I've looked over a number of ranchos, but I don't mind telling you I like yours best. The cool sea air will be very beneficial for my wife's health, too. But you see, Mr. Freeman, I don't want to sell. I only want a lease. I'll even do that. I'll take a lease if you'll give me the first option to buy. It's a deal, Mr. Freeman. And so Daniel Freeman, the father of Inglewood, came into possession of the great rancho. A few years after, he stocked its acres with new herds of cattle and fine horses and planted thousands of fruit and eucalyptus trees, he was able to exercise his option to buy. And the march of progress was begun. Up until 1875, it had been thought that this land was best for cattle and sheep raising. But in 1875 and 76, the great drought parched the land, and sheep and cattle died like flies. Daniel Freeman fought to save his herds. Round up those trays, Ben, and keep them moving. Don't let them stop. Oh, Dan, it's no use. The poor creatures can't stand well, it. If I can only get them to the hills, they may find enough green foliage to save them. Ah, but you'll never get them to the hills. Not many, anyway. They're dropping like flies. You've lost thousands of heads of sheep. I'll save the others if I can. Oh, no, it's not much use, Dan. You better do what some of the other ranchers are doing. Driving them over the cliffs into the sea. Pulling them out of their misery. Maybe, but I'm going to try the hills first. And, Joe, one thing I know. This country is going to grow and become a big shipping and industrial community. They'll need lots of farmland to supply them. And I am going ahead with the times. This is going to be a barley farm next year.
Daniel Freeman envisioned the great land that was to be, and he helped to build it, not just with his vast acres of barley, which found markets in New York and London, but as an active participant in the birth of a new city. In 1887, the directors of the Sentinella Englewood Land Company gathered... I am pleased to sell you this great tract of land for development into the town of Inglewood. Wait Mr. Freeman. We're going to build a real town. We're all set to buy and sell lots. Build a hotel, put in water and gas works, everything. Inglewood's going to be metropolis before you know it. Hey, look at this in the Inglewood Star. One million five hundred thousand feet of lumber will be delivered to Inglewood at once. Four million five hundred thousand feet more coming. Lumber will be sold at cost to all who will build... Fifty new buildings going up inside of 30 days. Railroads to Redondo Beach is in. Goes right through Inglewood. Why, there's nothing to stop us now. Why, we got grocery stores, hotels, livery stables, a brickyard, and we're even going to have a college. Yes, sir, the Freeman College of Applied Sciences. Sure, town lots and farms in Inglewood can be bought cheap today, but they'll never be cheaper. Inglewood's not a town on paper. No, sir, she's a real town. She's going to grow into a big, beautiful, and prosperous city. You bet. And Inglewood did grow into just that. Today, it's a prosperous community of over 30,000 people. It's tree-shaded streets of homes and gardens, watered by the same springs of the Sentinel, which attracted Antonio Ignacio Avila. Around it, on the 25,000 acres of the Rancho Aguaje de la Sentinela and Rancho Sao Sal Redondo, have sprung up other prosperous communities. Hawthorne, Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and El Segundo. On the romantic domain of the Avilas stands the Douglas Aircraft Company's El Segundo Division and the North American plant furnishing wings for the defense of our nation. One of the country's greatest airports is fast taking shape. It's the Los Angeles Municipal Port at Mines Field. And true to the traditions of Don Antonio Avila, that great horseman and catcher of horse thieves, and to the spirit of Daniel Freeman, breeder of fine horses, it is still intimately associated with the sound of running hooves. For it is the home of that modern mecca of horse lovers, Hollywood Park. Such is the story of progress. And such is the romance of the ranchos. Few people realize that title insurance service comparable to that provided by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is not available anywhere else in the United States at rates so low as prevail here. One reason such low rates are possible is that this company writes more policies of a title insurance than any other company in the United States. But the principal reason is the efficiency of its methods and personnel and the completeness of its files, the same files that contain the facts on which are based these authentic stories of Southern California's adventurous past. The Title Insurance and Trust Company sincerely hopes that you find these programs entertaining, that by exploring for you the colorful history of our Southland, They add something to your enjoyment in living here. And what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, our story deals with the home of movie stars, Beverly Hills, which was once the great rancho Rodeo de las Aguas. It's the story of a lonely but valiant widow who weathered trouble with neighbors and the Indians and single-handed raised her great family. And so, until next week, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. Romance of the Ranchos featuring Frank Graham as the Wandering Vaquero is brought to you each Wednesday night at this time by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>